Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're going to be talking about how it is that laser jammers actually work. Uh, there's actually a couple different ways that laser jammers can operate. There's not one technique, there's actually several. Uh, the technique that we're going to be covering is going to be the main one that's been used. Uh, it's what you'll see used in the uh, Laser Interceptor, the Escort Laser Shifter Pro, uh, the Blinder HP905 Compact. In this technique, uh, it's actually patented by Blinder. It uses a technique called lookup tables. And the idea is that it's going to basically uh, pay attention and notice what gun it's being shot with, and then it has a whole table that it looks through of saying, ah, when you see this gun, here's how you jam it. So it's kind of using a lookup table. There's actually a really good explanation by Junkyard Messiah, who's done kind of a whole talk on this, and a lot of what I'm gonna share uh, comes from his video, so that's definitely worth watching. I'll put a link in the video description uh, to where you can uh, watch that one. Um, additionally, kind of before I get started, I wanna point out uh, this presentation style, I wanna give a shout out to Jason Fenske of the YouTube channel Engineering Explained. Uh, he does a really cool um, YouTube channel explaining how things in cars work, and he does this kind of format with uh, dry erase boards and explaining stuff, and I really like it, so I'm basically, um, you know, kind of mimicking his style, so shout out to you, thanks Jason. Um, anyways, so with all that said, uh, let's go ahead and jump into how laser jammers work. Uh, if you haven't yet watched my video on how laser guns work, uh, go ahead and watch that one first. It's going to explain a lot of the stuff here, and once you understand how laser guns work, then uh, it'll make more sense what we need to do to actually jam that. So watch that video first. Okay, so here's how uh, we're going to wind up jamming the gun. Uh, the way things normally would work is, uh, if this is our LiDAR gun here, and this is our car that the LiDAR gun is going to be targeting, what's going to happen is it's going to be sending out a series of pulses like this. They're going to hit the vehicle, and they're going to reflect and bounce back. Again, we covered this in the LiDAR gun uh, video. Now, what's going to happen is if you want to jam the LiDAR gun, you're going to have to actually insert some jamming pulses, and here's what you're going to do. Uh, we're going to have the same pulses that are being shot, then uh, the first couple pulses are going to get reflected back from the vehicle itself, and then the LiDAR gun is going to start inserting its jamming pulses. Now the key to the jamming is not power. We're not trying to like blind it to the point where it can't see the pulses, but it has to do more with timing. And the idea is if you can insert a jamming pulse just before the actual reflected pulse, uh, the LiDAR gun is going to pay attention to the jamming pulse and it's going to ignore and throw out the actual reflected pulse. So it has to do with more with timing. Now, uh, here's the way that it works. Um, when we're looking, or when we're using lookup tables, the idea is we need to know what gun it is that we're being shot with. The different guns have different pulse, uh, pulse rates. They can be operating at 100 pulses per second, 125, 200, 4,000 pulses per second. So it's going to be a regular pattern, you know, pulse, 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 pulse. But uh, how fast those pulses are coming is going to depend on how the gun itself is designed. And this is actually what the... Uh, jammer uses to jam, and it's how it's able to announce when you get shot what gun you're being shot with, whether it's Custom Pro Laser 3, a True Speed S, whatever it is, it's looking at the pulse rate of the gun. So what we're going to look at is the first couple pulses, you know, they're all going to hit the car, and then the first ones are going to reflect back to the LiDAR gun completely untouched. Uh, we can take a look at how long it takes from the first pulse to the second pulse, the shorter the time, the faster the pulse rate, right? The longer it takes from one pulse to the next, the slower the pulse rate. And once we know how long it takes between the first and the second pulse, we now know what the pulse rate is. So for example, if the pulse rate, if it takes one one hundredth of a second to get the first pulse and then the second pulse, uh, we know that every one one hundredth of a second there's going to be another pulse, another pulse, another pulse. And that's going to be the key to jamming. So we can effectively kind of predict the future. We know when the LiDAR gun is going to be sending its pulses, and what we're going to do is we're going to then be sending jamming pulses back to the LiDAR gun just before uh, the subsequent pulses come back reflected from the vehicle. So the idea is it's still going to be getting the pulses reflected back from the gun, but we're going to want to insert our jamming pulses just before the real pulses make it back, and because we know the actual pulse rate, which is a predictable number, it's very easy to know when to insert our jamming pulses. So uh, here's the idea. If we take a look here at, um, gonna, we're going to start inserting our jamming pulses. Uh, again, the key here is timing and actually when we insert our jamming pulses. So let's say uh, we've got our first green is you know the transmitted signals, and blue are the uh, reflected signals being returned back to the LiDAR gun, right? So green, uh, this is going to be the pulse that's being transmitted from the LiDAR gun. This is the signal that's being reflected back to the LiDAR gun from the vehicle. Pulse number two. 
we've got our transmitted pulse, our reflected pulse. At this point, again, the LiDAR gun knows how long it takes between this and this, so it now knows what the pulse rate is of the gun. So now it knows when it can start uh, inserting its jamming pulses and when to expect the future ones, right? So what it's going to do here, you're going to notice we're going to have uh, our transmitted pulse, our red jamming pulse, and then our blue actual returned pulse. Uh, again, we're not stopping the return pulses, we're inserting jamming pulses just before the actual return pulse. So the LiDAR gun throws out the actual ones and it's paying attention to the, uh, the jamming pulses. Now here's the key with timing. Um, the idea is take a look at actually when the jamming pulses are inserted. Uh, you'll notice right here that the jamming pulse is inserted halfway, just in this example, between the actual transmitted pulse and the received pulse. Uh, over here, the jamming pulse is inserted really close to the transmitted pulse. Uh, over here, the jamming pulse is inserted very close and just before the return pulse. And the idea is we're going to be varying when the reflected pulse, which is actually the jamming pulse, comes back and is read by the LiDAR gun. Here's why that's important. Uh, remember in the other video when I was talking about uh, how the laser gun works, uh, normally it would be like 1,000 feet, 999, 998, 997, 996. It wants a very predictable, logical progression of speeds that makes sense, and it looks like the vehicle is actually slowly moving towards, or away, right? We want it to be moving towards the, um, the police car, and thus the LiDAR gun, and it would make sense. That's something that would make sense, right? What we want to do is actually return uh, some jamming pulses that don't make sense. And the idea is, if we start varying when the pulses are going to be coming, um, we'll notice this pulse right here, if it's happening between these two, um, it's basically shaving off about 50% of the speed. So what happens is, let's say the vehicle is actually a thousand feet away, that's where we're going to start. The first pulse that comes back, uh, it's going to be 999 feet away, just like before in our LiDAR gun example. Uh, the next one is going to be coming back a lot sooner, in only half the time. This next pulse, uh, we're going to tell the LiDAR gun that we're only 500 feet away from the LiDAR gun. Then what we're going to do is we're going to send back a return pulse super, super quick that comes back right after the pulse was actually transmitted, which means the distance is very, very short. So in this case, the return pulse is coming right after the transmitted pulse, so the distance may only be like 100 feet. It's a lot closer. Uh, finally, for this fifth pulse, you'll notice the jamming pulse is going to be coming just before the actual reflected pulse, so it's a longer distance. In this case, it may be 900 feet. So what's happening is, uh, rather than it looking like the vehicle is moving like this, we're going to make it look like the vehicle is just jumping all over the place. It starts like this, and then all of a sudden it gets super close, and then it's far away, and then super close and far away. And to the LiDAR gun, it looks like the vehicle is just kind of dancing all over the road, and the LiDAR gun is like, this doesn't make any sense. What the heck? I have no idea what to do with it. Like, a vehicle should be moving like this, but a vehicle that looks like going like this, a LiDAR gun can't get a speed reading off of that. And that's what a LiDAR jammer is designed to do. It's basically returning jamming pulses before the actual reflected pulses in such a way that doesn't make any sense to the LiDAR gun, and therefore the LiDAR gun can't give you a reading. That's how laser jammers work using lookup tables. They're basically seeing um, you know, what is the pulse rate of the LiDAR gun, and then once we know that, we can look up how we should then respond based upon this type of pattern. Um, some laser jammer manufacturers have designed uh, anti-jamming modes, and the idea is they're just going to vary up the pattern like this, uh, but as long as you know what the pattern is and you can predict it, you can still give back jamming pulses in such a way that make no sense. So this is one of the ways that you'll see with uh, a variety of different guns that use these kind of predictable pulse patterns to jam. This is how uh, laser jammers are operating um, that do this. And again, you'll see this in laser interceptors, uh, escort laser shifted pros, blinder HP 905s, etc. Uh, this is one of the main techniques that you'll see uh, implemented as far as uh, laser jammers. So there you go. Uh, if you want to see other stuff as far as maybe different techniques that are used, like brute force jammers, uh, you can click over here in this video and watch that one. Uh, if you want more information about radar, laser, that kind of stuff, uh, take a look down in the video description. You'll find uh, more videos with a whole bunch of other information. Uh, if you found this one helpful, uh, definitely thumbs up. Always nice. You can hear a cop going by. 
Uh, if you want more videos like this kind of stuff, uh, you can click the red subscribe video or subscribe button underneath this one. Uh, if you want to support this channel and help me make more videos, you can go to my channel and actually donate now. And you can donate directly, which does support me and help me out. So that's something that you have available as well. So awesome. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, other than that, catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.